Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. Very, very rainy day today. Kind of cold. It's been up and down the weather. But since we are here tonight on a nice gloomy day, let's talk about why you are getting gloomy looking prints. They may be off color. They may be too light, too dark. And I know we have covered this subject over and over again, but sometimes you need to go back and kind of refresh your steps of how to achieve the perfect print. Now, a printer out of the box, installed properly, initiated properly, and set up correctly so that it has a clean 100% nozzle check, okay? The head has been aligned properly, and you have printed one of these. Standard image. Notice how beautiful and neutral and correct this image is. Let me give you a little example as to how I analyze something like this. I would look at all the photos. These are just common images compiled into a collage to give you an impression of how your printer would perform printing a variety of images. This is in black and white. It is a an electron microscope type image, but I can tell looking at it that it is neutral throughout. It is not greenish, it is not purplish, it is not yellowish. It is neutral. I can see all of my steps from the darkest to the brightest and so on and so on. Everything looks correct. If you want to learn more about these, I have videos in my color management playlist that you can go back and examine where I cover this in great detail. But this is how you set up your printer. You don't print any of your images. Do not touch your images. Download that standard or evaluation image. It is available in my Facebook group under the Files tab. So if you haven't joined yet, this is a, a call to action, if you will, to you guys that have not joined the Photo Printing Techie Facebook group yet. There's over 24 hundred members already we're nearing 2500 now and they all think alike they all want to print photos at home so steps open up your printer out of the box install it read the instructions don't assume anything make sure that your nozzle check is perfect make sure your head alignment has been performed and now you're going to print that image and it doesn't matter whether you use photoshop it doesn't matter whether you use Lightroom, Q image, Capture One, whatever you use, just open up the image, file, print, or whatever number of steps you have to do in your application to print something, file, print. Then we're going to go to the driver and I'm going to show you what you need to do in order to print that image so that only the printer itself is controlling color, the printer and the driver. Okay? That way, no other influence is causing a shift in color. If that occurs, then you know it wasn't anything you did. You're just opening it, and you're printing it. And then you're setting up the driver the way I am going to show you. And then in the next video, I'm going to take you through an application that will make your color management basically dummy-proof. And this is the biggest dummy right here. It pretty much automatically does everything for you, among many things. And it's one of the best printing applications ever created. So let's get over to the screen and we'll start up setting up your printer. We're going to do that on a Canon printer and I'll do it on my Epson P800 as well. Each brand basically is about the same. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. Okay, so here we are in the welcome screen of Photoshop. This is the latest version. I subscribe to it. And so we will begin by clicking on the open button. I have my standard image folder here. It's named test images. You can download this complete pack from my Facebook group. We're going to go ahead and open up our favorite file. And now it's going to ask me to convert it. I do not want to do that in this case because I do not want to alter the color space that this image comes embedded with, which is ProPhoto. So I'm going to go ahead and click use the embedded profile instead of the working space. My Photoshop is set to work at Adobe RGB 1998, 
which is something that I recommend for everyone to use. But in this case, we're just going to print the standard image. And like I said, we do not want to alter it in any way, shape or form. So we're going to click OK. Make sure that you do that. If you have the warning system set up to warn you whenever there is a mismatch in color space, this will pop up. Make sure that in the case of the standard image, you use the embedded profile instead of the working space. Boom, we're going to open it up and here we go. So this is the image we're going to print. Are we going to edit it? No, we are not. Now, as I visualize this image of my calibrated monitor, it looks perfectly neutral to me. My black to white looks perfect. I see every single step. I see every single step from the two, zero being black, two being just above zero, and all the way up to 24, which is kind of a, a dark gray. But I can see every one of those gradually increasing density steps. Nothing is blocked. Everything looks good. The strawberries look good enough to eat. The baby's flesh tones look normal. Everything looks normal. We're going to go ahead and hit File and Print. That's all you're going to do. Open it and print it. We're going to pick a printer. In this case, an Epson 1400, an oldie but a goodie, great printer. And notice that I have a reminder here. It says, remember to enable printer color management in the Print Settings dialog box. And that is right here. So we're going to let the printer manage colors because all we want to do at this point is we want to establish that the printer by itself can actually produce a matching result to what we see on the screen of your calibrated monitor. Of course, everything depends on that monitor being calibrated. Now, I noticed that it's being cut off and it's really strange because I want to set this correctly. Let's go ahead and click on the print settings. Oh, no wonder we are working by default with four by six paper, which is not what we want to do. We want to use a letter size in this case. And let's just say we want to use a, I have a lot of luster paper, so we'll pick ultra premium photo paper luster. That's what I usually work with. And quality could be best photo or photo. We're just going to go ahead and use photo in this case. Now, what we want to do is we want to tell this printer to go ahead and control color. Go ahead and handle it. We want to turn off color enhance. We don't need any enhancement. I want to print this as raw as possible. I don't want to enhance anything. When we hit the advanced tab, we're going to get this window and it seems daunting, but you know, just leave it at the default setting. Okay. Epson standard, Epson standard. That is the default it will be at and what it's going to do automatically for you. Check, check it out. SP1400. PLPP, okay, Premium Luster Photo Paper. It has picked a profile for us automatically by clicking on ICM. If that is not clicked, make sure you click on that. It might be on some other tab. Make sure you click on ICM to make sure that the printer is actually printing by its default settings and it will automatically link this choice of paper to the correct profile that is installed in your hard drive if this happens to be the driver that you installed. Hit OK and hit Print. Boom, your results should match that. Let's go ahead and try another Epson printer. So file print. Now we're going to try a more modern printer, a P800. Here it is. We're going to get a totally different user interface. Print settings. Again, you must enter print settings. And here, as you can see, it looks totally different. We'll go ahead and change our size to something like letter. And uh, here it says off no color management or color adjustment because we were printing with ICC profiles from the application, but you're testing the printer straight out of the box. So what you want to do is set it to Epson standard sRGB. At this point, that's all I want you to do. Epson standard sRGB. And we're going to pick the ultra premium Photo paper luster again, this Epson standard sRGB, and there's nothing here. As you can see, everything is set. Epson standard sRGB, make sure that you have your gamma set at 2.2. 2.2 is a modern setting for gamma now. So make sure you have that, especially if you're using an older printer like the 1400. That one may be set at 1.8. And you need to reset it to 2.2 manually. But the more modern models of Epson printers will all be set at 2.2, which is today's standard for modern printers. We're going to click OK. Notice what we did. We chose the paper. OK. That will automatically link it to that profile. Quality is 
whatever you want to set it at max quality if you want you have a quality option where you can actually set it this is quality this is max quality so be aware of that it doesn't really matter much you will not really see a huge difference between those two settings and that is about it since we're using a lustrous paper notice that ink photo black ink has been chosen so if the printer is set at matte black it's going to do an automatic switch over to the photo black all right that is it click and print now notice what we have going on here this is a vertical or portrait orientation for the paper but the image because i have it set in photoshop horizontally it's of course oriented the wrong way so we can just click on landscape and it will be oriented correctly so it will print in the correct orientation and we click print and that is all you have to do okay let's go over to a canon printer and of course guess what we're going to choose pro 100 of course we'll do the pro 100 and then the uh, pro 1000 pro 100 series and this is a little bit different again the paper is not matching so we're going to go to the print settings and we're going to pick letter size photo paper pro luster and here we're going to go ahead and click on this color intensity manual adjustment button or box go to matching and set it to either icm or driver matching that is your default setting for letting the printer control color it will do an automatic link to the correct profile for you depending on which canon paper you're using this will only work with canon papers for which there is a drop down menu choice any of these papers it will do an automatic link to the correct profile let's do that again either icm or color matching it doesn't really matter it will do the automatic match and letter size this is the top tray they call it the rear tray high quality paper pro luster and everything is set make sure this is set to photo printing rather than standard or business or paper saving no make sure you have it always set at photo printing when you do that keep in mind that automatically by default it's going to go to borderless and i don't know why it does that but it does so keep that in mind and make sure that you catch that if you are playing around with those buttons it will switch it over to borderless so as you can see it switched everything around look at that crazy and you know the wrong paper got loaded so be careful it does that and it does it automatically i don't know why but keep an eye out for that okay make sure you don't get caught because it could very easily cause you to print with the wrong settings so we want to always print to luster in this particular example so we have pro luster chosen standard we switch it over to high we want good quality this has been turned on to icm or driver matching and we are all set okay and print now again we have an orientation problem because of the way that this has been oriented on photoshop i could flip it rotate it 90 degrees that would solve that print and we are good to go that's how you do that on the canon printers let's go ahead and choose another canon printer the beloved pro 1000 and again we'll switch it over to landscape right straight off the bat printer manages colors good again we're going to click on this photo paper pro luster is chosen letter size we're going to click on this to make sure we are in the correct settings driver matching good standard we'll switch it over to high not the highest but high we'll switch this over to the top feed instead of the manual feed and we are good to go there are many settings that you got to keep track of guys now most of you will just have one printer to worry about i have 13 that i have to babysit and make sure that all the settings are correctly set consistently all right so that is all you have to do boom and we print now how do i set say i have a pc a windows machine how do i set my single printer so that it always prints with a certain set of settings say all i have is pro luster let's go ahead and go to control panel devices and printers and we'll pick the in this case we'll just do the pro 100 just for fun right click printing preferences we can go ahead and close that we'll keep photoshop open for the time being so pro luster it could be whatever paper you happen to have on hand and make sure that this is set correctly see it's set to none driver matching we're going to just print with the driver from now on 
only with the driver because we do not know how to use ICC profiles through the editing application. So for this period of learning, we're going to stick with printing through the driver, letting the driver control color until we master that, until we get consistent results, practically printing with your eyes closed. That's how it should be. Okay, so we're going to rely on control panel, devices and printers, right click on the icon of your printer, printer preferences, and now we're going to set the defaults. So say if you're only printing mostly to letter size, we're going to set letter size, quality will be high, photo printing is checked, I got my paper that I got hundreds and hundreds of sheets of that particular type, matching, set it to ICM or driver matching, and apply. When you apply, then these will be the default settings for that printer. You will have to manually change your settings. So every time you open the driver inside your editing application, it will always be defaulted at the correct settings. And that's what we want to do, okay? So again, I showed you how many, 1400, P800, Pro 100, and the Pro 1000. Basically, all of the Canon printers are set the same way. All of the Epson printers, with a little change in the wording and the location, you're going to set it to allow the printer to control color using standard Epson sRGB, okay? And that will take this information here, this image right here, send it to the printer. You have not altered it. And if your monitor is calibrated correctly, then this will match that. Okay, and that's your goal. You want to be able to match the output results of that particular image that you never altered because it's been prepared by the ICC, the International Color Consortium. They prepare this image. It is the correct, everything is correct on it. Nothing is wrong with it. And so that is your standard by which you evaluate whether your printer is producing the correct results. So the goal here is to print that standard image and take that image, place it next to your monitor, also displaying that same image. The results you see on your calibrated monitor visually should match the results you see on paper. Now, keep in mind, the paper is lit by reflective light. Monitors are lit by transmitted light, and anything that is viewed by transmitted light will have a wider, a much larger dynamic range, okay? It will be brighter. In layman's terms, it will have more pop, whereas a print always, always will look a bit duller than what you see on your display. So do not expect as far as the brilliance part of the display goes, for it to match the print. What you want to achieve is a match in color and a match in density and contrast, okay? And also neutrality, of course. So that is it. Yes, it could be a little bit daunting, but again, if you just have one printer to deal with, set it up the way I displayed. If it's a Canon printer, hit the Canon section of this video. If it's an Epson printer, hit the Epson section and you will see what you need to do. And this is, again, I'm emphasizing that you are letting the driver control color because that's what you did when you created that standard image. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to use an ICC profile. So please make sure you catch that, view them in the correct order. I'm gonna add this to the basic printing playlist and also to the color management playlist on which there are a bunch of videos that you should be watching. If you have any problems with color management, with matching the monitor to your prints and vice versa, make sure you catch those videos because they are very helpful. I know that this is a foreign subject to many, but again, once you grasp it and you understand what's happening, you'll get that aha moment. You might be sleeping and you'll wake up and it'll be an aha moment. That happened to me. I woke up out of a deep sleep and I literally went down to the basement and started to mess around with my printers and computer at the time. That was many, many, many years ago. All right, so thank you so much for watching. Make sure you watch the next video in this series. So again, subscribe, share, and like, and happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.